Hi everybody, I'm Chris Wook from Android Authority, and today it's family infighting. It's brother against brother. Two phones enter, and, well, actually, both phones leave, but not before they fight, because today it's the HTC Droid DNA versus the HTC One X Plus. <laughs> For two high-end phones from the same manufacturer, the Droid DNA and the One X Plus are anything but identical. Different chipsets from different manufacturers, different design choices, and varying specs are just the beginning. Now let's see if we can navigate these tricky waters to find ourselves a winner. The HTC Droid DNA has a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro chipset with a 1.5GHz quad-core crate processor. Meanwhile, the HTC One X Plus uses the NVIDIA Tegra 3 chipset and a 1.7 GHz quad-core Cortex-A9 processor. Graphics-wise, the Droid DNA uses the fairly common Adreno 320 GPU, and the One X Plus runs a ULP GeForce chip clocked at 520 MHz. We'll get down to how these chipsets perform in a little bit. While the Droid DNA has 2 gigs of RAM, the One X Plus only has 1 gig of RAM but it makes up for this with its 64 gigs of internal storage to the Droid DNA's 16 gigs. Being two of HTC's top-of-the-line devices, both the Droid DNA and the One X Plus have generally excellent build quality. As a necessity of its larger screen, the HTC Droid DNA is slightly bigger. It's clearly longer than the One X Plus, and the Droid DNA is wider and thicker as well, but by less than one millimeter. The layouts of the Droid DNA and the One X Plus are very similar, with the capacitive buttons and the volume buttons being located in the same spots. The position of the headphone jack is the same as well, with the only difference in layout being the placement of the power button. On the Droid DNA, it's located in the very center of the top of the device, while it's on the right side of the top on the One X Plus. One small thing that I found I really preferred about the HTC One X Plus is its haptic feedback. It's a strange thing to note, I know, but it's a very subtle difference that adds a nice touch to the general feel of the One X Plus. Looking at the screen, the HTC Droid DNA clearly has the edge over the One X Plus. While it's only slightly larger at 5 inches to the One X Plus's 4.7 inch display, the larger screen is definitely nicer, especially since it doesn't make the DNA significantly bulkier. As I mentioned in my review of the Droid DNA, you're not always going to notice the extra pixel density in the 1080p screen, but when you do, it's a clear advantage over the smaller 720p display found in the One X Plus. With the two phones sporting different chipsets, processors, and graphic chips, this is where I expected to see the most differences between the HTC Droid DNA and the One X Plus, and this turned out to be true. Now, you're not going to notice a difference in most cases. When launching or running apps, both of these devices perform very well. While I don't put much credence into benchmarks, this is where the differences were the most obvious. The Droid DNA came out ahead in nearly every test I threw at both devices, especially when the CPU was receiving the brunt of the testing. When the GPU was being more heavily taxed, the Tegra-powered One X Plus would often show higher frame rates, though both devices remained close. It's worth noting that during benchmarks, I noticed the HTC One X Plus would warm up very quickly, while the Droid DNA would stay cool. Later on during testing, I noticed the One X Plus had a tendency to get warm fairly often. The rear-facing cameras on the Droid DNA and the One X Plus appear to be identical. The megapixels, focal lengths, and aperture sizes are the same, and if you take a picture of the same scene from the same location in the same lighting, it's difficult to impossible to tell which phone it came from. The same goes for the 1080p video capture. As long as the scene and lighting is the same, you'll end up with the same results from either camera. This isn't the case for the front-facing camera. While the Droid DNA's front-facing camera is 2.1 megapixels and captures 1080p video, the front-facing camera on the One X Plus is 1.6 megapixels and only captures 720p video. Though you're sure to hear more people complaining about the 2020 milliamp hour battery in the HTC Droid DNA, the HTC One X Plus is barely better with its 2100 milliamp hour battery. 
Strangely enough, I noticed that despite the One X Plus having a slightly larger capacity, it seemed to drain faster, especially when I was running benchmarks or during other resource-intensive tasks. Since my review of the HTC Droid DNA, I've been using the phone in a more normal fashion, and I've noticed that battery life hasn't been an issue. My usual overnight charging works fine, and I have yet to run low on battery or need to charge midday. Neither of these phones is going to stand up to devices with batteries with capacities of over 3,000 milliamp hours, but at the same time, neither actually have battery life as bad as it has been made out to be. If you're like me, and I know I am, you live in the cloud. Aside from space for a few apps, you barely need internal storage, let alone a lot of it. In this case, the Droid DNA is going to be fine because you're not going to miss the extra storage provided by the One X+. Plus. Now, you probably also spend a lot on your data plan or have to stay pretty close to Wi-Fi hotspots, but that's a different story. On the other hand, you may be an app addict. You may download music and movies and games constantly. You may not even be aware of the fact that you can delete photos and videos from your phone. In that case, the 11 usable gigabytes of storage on the Droid DNA aren't going to last you more than a few minutes. In that case, you're going to want to go with the One X Plus. Then there are the screens. If you've ever seen me talk about the Droid DNA before, you'll know that I absolutely love this screen. That said, on a display this size, 780p is nothing to sneeze at. Personally, I choose the Droid DNA. Mainly because of its screen, but I also prefer the way that it handles, and frankly this may not matter all that much, but I think it's the better looking of the two phones. Now it's your turn. Which of these two phones do you prefer and why? Let us and everybody else know in the comments. This has been Chris Wook for Android Authority, and thanks for watching.